Hi guys, this is Paul here from PA Brew News, and I really should have stopped eating before I hit record. I'm just enjoying my supper, some pizza, and I'm going to do the very first-ish first for me. I'm going to do a homebrew review. And I'm going to start my homebrew Wednesdays. And I don't know any homebrewers except for me. So <laughs> I'll be drinking my own homebrews and I'm letting you know. I don't want to spoil the surprise or anything for some of the people that will get my homebrews later. But this is basically my take on it. And of course, when I do it, I'll be a little bit younger. So maybe by the time they get over to certain people, it'll be a little older. It might be different. This is the <coughs> Hot Heathen Honey, dedicated to my wife. It's supposed to be, let's just say that, it's supposed to be, I'll never say anything for sure. It's supposed to be a amber ale, and a uh, heavily hopped amber ale with uh, varying degrees of crystal malts, um, some brown malt, I just put a little bit of brown malt in there. And I added some coffees, and I added some elderberry, uh, and I added about three pounds of honey. And the hops I used, I used seven ounces. I only did five gallons, but I did seven ounces of hops. Excuse me. Um, they were Centennial uh, Cascade, and then I, I finished it off with a big handful of loose leaf crystal hops and I don't know anything about home brewing um, when I home brew basically it's me just closing my eyes and start throwing a bunch of stuff into a pot and then I just whatever comes out comes out I don't know the ABV I don't know the gravity I don't really care <laughs> honestly if it, if it, if when I can just make something without thinking about it while I take care of my girls or whatever or this and that and I can drink it after I'm done. Hey, I'm a happy man. So, here's hot heathen honey. I only have it, you're supposed to, when I tell people to, to drink my beer, let it sit in your uh, refrigerator for a day. Just a good day, settle it down, get it cold. This has been in the refrigerator for like, I don't know, 20 minutes. And it didn't explode. Hey, I don't expect this. I drank a little bit. There's a little bit of some bubbles rising up. This isn't extremely heavily carbonated, from what I remember, when I tasted it a, a week ago. Hope you can see that. There it goes. I'm getting it all in. Putting it all in. Look at that. The, the yeast cake has actually latched itself to the bottom. You can't see this in that, in that camera. No way in hell. But I'm surprised, because usually the, the yeast likes to go to town. This has stayed in. I got all this damn beer in this big old glass. I'm a big boy. My hand's pretty big. It's a big old glass. So that's good. Look at the nice... I mean, I, that was a pretty rigorous pour, I, I will admit. Big frothy head on it. Uh, nice tight bubbles. Um, this is the first time I've ever reviewed any of my homebrew, so I'll be completely blatantly honest. Little tiny bubbles is all through this thing. Small and sparse, but they're going. Carbonation rising up. I'm good to wash it around a little bit. You get the big hops. You get the big hop aromas. Extremely lemony, really zesty grapes. Not grapes, oranges rather. Very bitey, bitey citrus notes. High, high content citrus notes. It smells a lot like the aroma you get off a hot back amber ale. And that's kind of why I did it, because my wife really does enjoy the hot back amber I can't stop eating this pizza. Um, and that's why I did I did a, a little beer just for her. You do get that in the, in the smell quite a bit. Um, Alright, taste time, I guess. Here we go.
It's a smooth, subtle malt base. It's not really there. It's not that sweet. The hop there is all, always there. There's a huge hop presence, a very big, big lemon and um, orange and citrus and grapefruit notes. Always there going down. And the nice bitterness. Low level bitterness remains. It, it's not going away. Let's go again. Not too complex at all. I don't get any like big honey notes. I don't get any elderberry notes. It, the bitterness makes it enjoyable. The hop base makes it enjoyable. The fruit flavors of the hops and the bitterness from the hops makes it um, the the low carbonation and uh, kind of even the low malt base. I mean, it's not extremely sweet at all. And I think, let's see. The bitterness makes it nice because you know you're drinking an ale. But it, it's, the, hop, the hops aroma, it's mixing with a little bit of a malt and the aroma and the hops are just, they're not going away, they're there to stay. And it, it's, it's an enjoyable hop. I mean, there is lacing, it's, it's, it's sticking. It's going. It's pretty good. If you slug it back even more, the hops become more subtle. And it's just this smooth bitterness. And after you drink, then it just goes boom in your mouth. And I like that because um, to me it makes it even more sessionable, which I like. It's pretty good. For instance, I mean that was a pretty big it's a pretty big glass. Excuse me. I think that was a one pint point six ounce bottle. Something like that. Was it? Or was it a 22 ounce bottle? Um, <laughs> same thing. Um, but it's gone. It's not there anymore. And um, I could easily have another one of these. I think a lot of the malt and the sweetness it's actually being masked by the amount of, of hops. That's why that's why it's not very malty, not very sweet, because it's there. <coughs> Excuse me. It's just being masked. Because you can get on the sweet, you can get it on the smell. You get some of the malt and the herb. It's just not there. Um, if I were to do it again, I would add five pounds of honey, fresh honey. Not this caramelized stuff or um, crystallized stuff that I got in a big jug. I'd probably add five pounds just to give it a little more weight, hey, which might actually boost up the alcohol content, which may make it a little bit less sessionable, but you know, might make it a little bit more sweet. And then I probably would add some, get another pound of 60, like probably about 60 um, crystal malt. Another pound of sixty. Well, live and learn, but at the same time, it's not a harsh lesson to learn because it's it's very good. I can drink a lot of it, and um, it, it's about time to give it a proper rating. And what right? Uh, if I had to look at it, if I was looking at this as an amber ale, I would probably give it a. I'm a little bit lacking on the whole amber ale aspect of it because even with hot back you do get kind of the, you can taste the amber ale-ness about it. I mean it's a little lacking but it's, it's still there. I would give it, I'd probably give it a 5, probably 5 out of 10 for the amber ale quality. But if it was uh, American Bitter or American Session Ale, I'd probably give it a 7 or 8 out of 10. It's definitely drinkable. I like it. I like the hop base. The fruitiness of the hops 
make it that much more refreshing when you drink it too. And then I'm going sideways again because the girl's here. But uh, this has been Paul from PA Brew News, and this has been my first review. This is Wolf's Lair Breweries Hot Heat and Honey. That what it says? That's what it says. It says nothing. There's no label on it, but when you get the label, that's what it'll say. Wolf's Lair Brewery Hot Heat and Honey. This has been Paul from PA Brew News, and I'll see ya. Your uh, camera's about to fall off. No, 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 not staying. Cheers!